With this question, we're dealing with quantity controls or quotas. Uh, and this is taken from Krugman Wells Microeconomics, uh, second edition, chapter five, which is the um, the market strikes back chapter, question ten. So in this question, we're told that in Maine, you must have a license to harvest lobster commercially. Their licenses are issued yearly. The state of Maine is concerned about the dwindling supplies of lobster found off the coast. Off its coast, the state fishery department has decided to place a yearly quota of 80,000 pounds of lobsters harvested in Maine waters. Uh, it has also decided to give licenses this year only to those fishermen who had licenses last year. The company diagram shows the demand and supply curves for Maine lobsters. So here, uh, as usual, on the vertical axis, you got the price, uh, in this case, the price of lobster per pound, uh, going from zero up to 22. Uh, and on the horizontal axis, you have quantity of lobsters, both demanded and sold, uh, and this is in thousands of pounds. So, um, for example, at a price of 20 bucks, um, there's 20,000 pounds of lobster demanded. Uh, and moving down the demand curve, as the demand, as the, the price decreases, uh, the quantity that people are willing to demand is going to steadily increase. Uh, and then inversely, you have the supply curve here, upward sloping supply curve. Um, at very low prices, uh, so for example, $6 per pound, you have a relatively low quantity supplied, in this case 20,000 pounds. And then at a relatively high price, this looks maybe about $12 per pound, you have a relatively high quantity uh, supplied of 140,000 pounds of lobster. So in this problem, you know, pretty simple setup, just with an example. So the usual demand and supply curve, the, the demand curve is downward sloping, supply curve is upward sloping. Everything here is kind of normal, uh, except you've been given actual numbers uh, for prices and quantity, and you know, you've been kind of told this question, this question is set up in terms of like a real live commodity, lobsters. Okay, so let's turn to the first part, so part A. Um, in the absence of government restrictions, what is the equilibrium price and quantity? So equilibrium price and quantity is the point in a market where quantity supplied equals quantity demanded. So that's going to be at this point E. Um, so this is where the two, you know, the demand and supply curves intersect. So in this case, quantity demanded is going to be 120,000 pounds of lobster, and quantity supplied is the same, 120,000 pounds of lobster. And then the equilibrium price, which is where quantity demanded equals quantity supplied, is going to be $10 per pound per lobster. Um, and then, so it's designated by this point E. So that's our equilibrium price, uh, $10, and equilibrium quantity, $120. Sorry, 120,000 pounds of lobster. Moving on to part B. It asks, what is the demand price at which consumers wish to purchase 80,000 pounds of lobsters? Um, so I think I haven't really heard the reference to demand price before. Maybe it was in the textbook or something, but uh, it's not anything particularly tricky. When it asks demand price, it's simply asking, uh, so given uh, 80,000 pounds, 80,000 pounds of lobsters demanded, what is the price uh, that would get that quantity demanded? And for that, you simply go to the demand schedule or the demand curve and see at 80,000 pounds of lobsters, what is the demand price? So what is the price? Uh, 14. So this tells you at a price of 14, um, in this market, there's going to be 80,000 pounds uh, demanded by the market. So the demand price of 80,000 pounds of lobsters is this $14 right here. Simple as that. Next up, uh, we're asked part C, what is the supply price at which suppliers are willing to supply 80,000 pounds of lobsters? Um, simple question here. It's basically asking, um, so given 80,000 uh, pounds of lobster, what's the, the price that uh, suppliers will be induced to supply exactly that amount, 80,000? Uh, and the answer is this $8 right here. Pretty sure that's exactly 80,000 pounds. So at $8 uh, per pound of lobster, um, their suppliers are willing to supply 80,000 pounds of lobsters. Simple as that. Very simple question. So up next, we're asked in part D, what is the quota rent per pound of lobster when 80,000 pounds are sold? Illustrate the quota rent uh, and the deadweight loss uh, on the diagram. So first off, what is a quota rent? So a quota rent is the extra earnings um, that has occurred to 
one of these sellers in this market who uh, has earned or somehow acquired the right to sell in this market. Uh, and it's equal to the difference between the demand price and the supply price. So let me label up, let me give me a couple minutes to label this uh, diagram. Okay, so I've uh, labeled this up here. You got the quota at 80,000 lobsters. Um, uh, fixing the quantity of lobsters at 80,000, the market's going to sort itself out such that the demand price is equal to this 14, uh, and then the supply price would be $8. Um, and the idea behind the quota rent, this quota rent of the difference between the two, so 14 minus 8 is 6 bucks, is that um, given a limited supply, you know, only 80,000, so that's less than the equilibrium, so given this limited supply of 80,000, um, what price is going to actually occur in the market? Uh, well, it's going to be this demand price um, because uh, the kind of incentives of the market are going to be set up such that even though um, this quantity of suppliers, 80,000, would be willing at a price of $8, uh, there are enough suppliers who'd be willing to sell at 80,000. Um, given that limited quantity, that 80,000, 80, um, and given those suppliers who would have been willing to sell that at 8 bucks, um, you have this extra extra demand. So, for example, $8, there are these, the, the, the total of 140,000 people willing to demand it. Um, and the difference between the two, that's an extra 60,000 um, thousand pounds of lobster that would be demanded on the market. So those extra demanders um, who would be willing to get it, but even though there's a demand of 140,000 uh, pounds of lobster, uh, fixing it at that 80,000 means the, the demanders of the market are going to be pushing up the price and there's incentive for the price to rise. So for this type of market, if the government institutes a quota, the the market's at 80,000 pounds of lobsters. The market's going to settle itself such that the price that you see in the market per lobster is going to be 14 pounds per lobster. Okay, so now at the price of 14 pounds per lobster, um, you can see the supply is fixed at this 80,000. Um, and at $14 per lobster, there's actually, you know, the supply curve doesn't even go that far. But you can imagine that they're at $14 Per lobster, there's going to be a ton of people willing to supply that quantity, um, you know, some lobsters at 14. However, the market is designed such that those people are just simply not allowed to supply. You know, those, those boats aren't allowed to go out and to pick up those lobsters. So uh, this quota system, you know, somehow they have to distribute the rights to sell uh, lobster, um, in, in this case at 14. So, you know, no matter what system they use, whether it be like a lottery uh, and, you know, fishing boats just win the right or some sort of inheritance or seniority system where people who have been fishing uh, for collecting lobsters for generations, those are the people who get the, the right um, first to supply lobsters. Somehow people are going to be given that ownership of the right to sell lobsters. Um, and to those people, um, they're going to acquire this extra quota rent, so the extra earnings um, of being allowed to sell the lobsters in the market. So then the deadweight loss of this market is going to be equivalent to this triangle here. From point E down to uh, where the quota meets the, the supply price um, up to where the quota meets the uh, demand price. And then remember that the deadweight loss uh, equivalent to this area of this triangle is the kind of amount of value lost in this market due to this quota. Um, the idea being that if the market were allowed to go to equilibrium, you'd have this additional amount of value going to producers and, and uh, demanders. Um, but because of this quota is in place, this is kind of the amount of value that's going to be lost due to this quota. And then finally, we're asked in Part E, explain a transaction that benefits both buyer and seller, but is prevented by the quota restriction. Um, and that's, I think that's as simple as this, is that um, so you have 80,000 uh, thousand pounds of lobster um, supplied here and 80,000 um, demanded. However, if this quota weren't in place, um, that 80,000 and first lobster, so this little extra lobster right there, sellers would be willing to supply at a slightly above eight bucks, uh, and a demander, that extra, you know, one extra lobster uh, would be willing to, to there would be some 
people in the market willing to pay a slightly less than fourteen dollars for that extra lobster um, and so you know a transaction would be that there's you know an eighty thousand and one like the the next lobster pound of lobster would be willing to supply it at this slightly greater than eight bucks uh, and then purchase for slightly less than uh, 14 bucks you know the, the actual sale price is going to be somewhere in the middle there that would benefit both demander uh, in that they get a lobster for a price that they're willing to pay and would um, benefit the seller because they're willing to sell it at that price uh, however the quota restriction just prevents that from happening uh, you know at 80,000 pounds of lobster it's not allowed in the market Cool. So that was cool. So that was our quantity control or quota question. Uh, you know, and in quota questions, what happened is the government issues some maximum quantity that the the, the market is allowed to be produced in that market, uh, and they issue it through some sort of license system. Uh, and assuming the quota quantity is less than the equilibrium quantity, you're going to get some sort of inefficiency uh, resulting in a dead weight loss. Note that that dead weight loss, that inefficiency, uh, doesn't take into account, you know. Uh, other benefits that the quota might uh, put in place. So for example, with the uh, main lobster, the worry there is that uh, at this equilibrium quantity, too many lobsters would be uh, taken out of the ocean, uh, you know, depleting the stocks so that in future generations or future years, there's just fewer and fewer a lobster just like functionally, you know, allowed out of the, the water. Um, but the deadweight loss, um, uh, shows what the like the value the market value that's lost due to this quota system um, but another, another interesting thing to, to note is that uh, the government has uh, another option um, besides quotas they could institute like an excise tax so the excise tax in this case uh, you could the excise tax that the government could put in would be equivalent to the six bucks so um, at an excise tax of six dollars um, at an excise tax of six dollars, that's a kind of a two shifting up curve. Give me a second to do that. Shifting up the supply curve by the six dollars, um, pushing the new supply curve. That's you know the the tax included supply curve up to here, so that the new equilibrium price and quantity is at this fourteen dollars. Uh, with the equilibrium quantity at 80,000. And so if the government had put it in the $6 excise tax, uh, this rectangle area right here, um, from $14 to $8, all the way to 80,000 pounds of lobster, this whole area right here uh, would go to the government in, in forms of tax revenue. Um, with the quota system in place, this whole area, this kind of trapezoidal shaped area, I think it's a trapezoid, uh, is going to producer surplus, but with the tax system in place, you have this huge area that's going to tax revenue. This smaller triangle down here is the producer surplus, and then this triangle up here is the consumer surplus. So two systems, you know, the quota versus the excise tax, that um, both give the same deadweight loss, um, and both give this new equilibrium, this new price, this post-government intervention price of 14, and this uh, government intervention quantity of 80,000, but results in different distributions of surplus. Cool. Hopefully that was helpful, and thanks, and have a good day. Bye.